Oh yeah, that is some good smoky lighting. And if I move around, it'll change. Uh, welcome to um, the... What is this? A deer? The deer episode. I think it's episode 13 or 14 of Quarantine Update. Uh, this was the outfit, in fact, maybe I can show you more of it. No, probably not, it'll fall, fall over. This was the outfit that I think Miller wore during uh, a six kilometer run that we went on. Uh, in Vilnius they have multiple through the city uh, marathons, but then they do like full marathons, half marathons, and then a five or a six kilometer. And lots of people do it, and it like shuts down the whole middle of the city. And I've never done a run. I've never thought of doing a run. Why would I do that? Especially in winter. And so about every year for the last like five, Camilla's done it. And usually by herself because none of her friends like doing that sort of stuff. And so this year I was like, yeah, I'll do it with you. And she was like, do you want to wear this? <laughs> and I thought, oh, that'd be pretty funny walking through the entire, no, running through the entire old town of the city I live in in a this kind of costume, uh, but I decided as it was my first run that I would just go with normal clothes, and so she ended up running in it, and it seems quite warm, and it's got a little tail on the back, so that's probably good for aerodynamics, and we did it, we completed the run, I didn't go that fast, and I think I held her back from getting a good time, but it was fun, and everyone gets stressed up, that, I think that's why this was suggested, because it's less of a like serious run, the six kilometer at least, and more like just dress up as a Christmas ornament or there was a lot of superheroes in the pack and you do like stretches before you start. It's so funny. I, I kind of liked it. I probably should work out before we do it next year because this year both of us were like, yeah, I'll do some runs beforehand. None of us did. I wonder if anyone in the six kilometer does. Probably not. Because all the like actual marathon runners were quite professional looking and they posted some ridiculously good times or yeah times uh, then I was talking to some friends over the last week about what I should put in these updates and I think originally I said I would talk about uh, what I did when I first moved to Europe and he was like yeah 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 do that and so I thought I'd do a quick overview of what brought me here so in 2013 uh, I was working in Newcastle in Australia on some projects that would have me in Australia for three months and then out of Australia for three months and then sometimes in Australia for six months and then away for three months. And it was constantly like uh, teaching and taking uh, students on these trips through Australia too, but it wasn't like staying in one spot for a long time and it wasn't like upskilling for me. And so I talked with my directors and my department heads if I could just leave for five months and get some upskilled training. And so I went to uh, South Africa for six weeks to do uh, like a critical thinking societal behavior course with uh, one of my heroes. And then I moved to Sweden to do a similar but different course from a different perspective. And I was um, aiming to be back in Australia after that five months to continue similarly to what I was doing. But halfway through the Sweden thing, they asked me to stay on for two years to help run a communications course. And so I was like, yeah, all right, that sounds all right, thinking it would be an amazing project. And then as I got into that project, it looked almost impossible because the region of the organization I used to work for uh, was starting to grow in certain ways and then shrink in certain ways and we're in the middle of the growing and shrinking and we didn't have the staff base to like keep it going at the height that it was going and so it started sort of collapsing on each other on itself and so I was like oh um this project isn't going to work so good and then I got offered a project in news uh, in Norway from another hero of mine and whose daughter was going to marry one of my best friends who I hadn't seen for years. So I was like, yeah, I'll go help with that project and then come back. And so my director there was like, yeah, that's cool. And then, and all of this time I had this feeling like I was supposed to move to Lithuania and I was supposed to start some projects in Lithuania for the organization. And so after the Norway project, um, I had this two-week period where I'd either have to 
um, step back into the projects in Sweden, move back to Australia and step back into those projects, or just move to Lithuania and start whatever was going to start. And so I was like, yeah, I'll do that one. And so I went to our regional director and I was just like, I'm going to move to Lithuania. And he was like, shouldn't you take a team or like train for something like that? And I was like, no, I'm just going to go. He was like, all right, that's weird, but okay, we'll like help as much as we can. And so, but even last night, me and Camilla were talking, I went from living in a house with a hundred people to moving to a farm in the middle of nowhere in Sweden to moving to another farm in the middle of nowhere in Norway. And then I was planning to move to a country that I didn't really know anyone, didn't speak the language and didn't have a team around me for what I was trying to attempt. So ridiculous. And so that was an interesting journey of um, different work and different projects and learning a lot of things really quick. And so, yeah, I've done a few things. And like out of the Sweden project and out of the Norway project, I, I headed to Latvia. I was in um, Denmark for a while. I was in and out of the Netherlands quite a lot because I had a lot of people there that I liked visiting. So it was just... And then the nightmare of visas started because the projects out of Australia, we would still need visas to get in and out of bits of Southeast Asia. But they were pretty straightforward. Like you'd go to the airport sometimes like it would be on arrival or you would it, we had this big um tense story of trying to get our um visas to Myanmar but we were in Thailand and so the Myanmarese I've forgotten the word not embassy consulate in Thailand was quite hard to get to and we didn't speak either of the languages so it's just a nightmare but so I'd have that but that those were pretty straightforward but then the visa nightmares of uh, going through a not-profit that wasn't linked to the state church in uh, Sweden. So they'd all be like, so you're doing youth work, but you're not a part of the state church, and you're not a business, so we don't really understand why you are. <laughs> and so those visas were weird. And then coming here, because we weren't registered and we aren't registered here, that whole situation was weird. And so, yeah, I learned a lot about international um, relations and stuff like that. Uh, then also, I was going to have this box. We've got this box somewhere of, uh, it's called Table Topics Questions. And Table Topics is this, um, maybe I'll change the lighting for a bit. Oh, yeah, you can see the tail. The tail! Uh, table topics is this thing that um, I first heard about it because my dad used to do Toastmasters, which is like a public speaking training program. And they used to give you just a theme and you would have 60 seconds to talk nonstop about that theme. And it was like a practice of how you improvise and how you <coughs> construct good public speaking on the fly. And so we have this box somewhere and it has all of these and they're really deep questions. And I used to throw them at my English... Um, students just to see how their vocabulary worked on the fly with subjects that they weren't necessarily use, used to talking about. But because I didn't screen them, I would just give them the whole pack and they'd just pick one. Some of them were like hella intense and intimate and I'd be like, oh, I wonder if they're not going to do this. Like, I'm happy if they bail because it's too intimate, but they could talk if they want. And they always did it and it's so fascinating. So I was going to do that today, but then I don't know where the box is. Because on Facebook, a while ago, I started doing these, like, a couple of things, and then I would list nine statements with a question at the end for people to respond to, or just statements of how I see the world currently. And I love it, because my Facebook friend networks come from all over. Like, not just way back in high school, but... Um, the last 10 years in and out of different countries and people are from both sides of politics and both parts of beliefs and um, older people and young people and it's just fascinating to me that you can throw out these thoughts and friends of mine that heavily disagree with me will respond quite respectfully and help me think through why I think certain ways and it's the best. Even people who are agree with me on a lot of things will push back just because they know that I like pushback. It's the best. And then you get the trolls and that's fine. 
In fact, being off uh, Facebook for the last almost month has taught me a lot about how easily I'm triggered into almost troll trolling. And so just learning how to let my thoughts be like, oh, that's triggering and I'd like to argue that, but there's no point. So I'll just go to something else because it's a waste of time almost to get irritated out of something that it's just a disagreement. So anyway, and then today there's snow on the ground. Well, ice. Which is just so odd to me because in um, Australia language, this is early spring, right? And so we should be seeing flowers and green all the time, but it feels like Australian winter. Or even yesterday, we were going to put the recycling out and I was like, this feels like the perfect Canberra autumn day <laughs> because it was like blue skies, but a little bit crisp, but not too cold. Canberra autumns are the best. Mm, 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 Canberra Autumns. And then, we're getting through this puzzle. We hated it for a while, but it's going all right now. I like it because it's complicated, um, what's it called? Colours. It's supposed to look like this. Sorry, I should have given you that anyway. Because the first few puzzles we did were like a blue dog on a grey background or um, a beach with three colors. And it was pretty easy to figure out where everything is, but this is like multiple houses, different textures, similar colors sometimes, which is fine. And then soon, today in the mail, I should get my kombucha scoby. I tried to um, brew kombucha just from a bottle of kombucha because apparently you can build a scoby out of that, but mine has not done that so much. So I got a, a scoby off the internet and hopefully that'll come in the mail today. And uh, then I can start brewing stuff again. I think we're going to start with orange or lemon and ginger. Mm -mm 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 Delicious. Also, today we had curd pancakes for breakfast and it was so good. I'm not very good at making them though. It's funny how my brain so quickly goes to if you put the heat higher... The food will cook faster as opposed to, no, some foods need to be cooked slowly or they'll stick to the pan, which happened today. They stuck to the pan. I don't remember if Australia has curd cheese. It's kind of like ricotta or cottage cheese, but it's different. It's so good here. And you can put it in so much stuff. I used to put it in my porridge for proteins because a Finnish lady told me to and it was awesome but curd pancakes are awesome and the first time Camilla tried to make it for me or with me when I was around it was she rang her dad for the recipe it was so fun and his recipe is so good I think we found it in a book but it didn't work out as good and then it, her dad was like no you do it like this and you do it like this so good. Her dad has some amazing recipes. And um, I feel like that's enough for today. Another good old update. Work's been alright. I finish training tomorrow and that's when it gets a little scary because then I won't have this help line. But it's pretty straightforward and I have some really good colleagues. Yesterday was very fun. I just miss being with large groups of people in person, which is weird because a lot, <laughs> a lot, and that's not even overstating it, a lot of my friends are introverts, so the quarantine is quite happy for them, like they're living their best life, <laughs> and then I have a few extroverted friends who are just like, I've got to go out, man, i just got to be in like a supermarket or something with people, and I'm getting there because I like big crowds of people. Which was, again, talking about it last night, it was interesting going from living with 100 people to living with, like, one person on a floor in a big house in the middle of nowhere on a farm. And I'm a city kid, so I was just like, this is beautiful, but gross. But it was good fun. Some good people there. All right, Bumblebee Tuna, see you later.